do it. Boom. There we go. So thank you, Derek, for being on the podcast. How's it going, man? It's going good, man. Thanks for having me. Of honor. Course, yeah. Big honor. Of course, man. I saw you just got some new fly kicks. What were those? The, the white so, ones that you're obsessed with. Uh, well, which ones? Cause I like, I have a man. plethora of like, white shoes. I think the it was like three, three days ago. Yeah. Three days. Yeah. So those are these, um, they're a collab with this. I think it's a French, uh, fashion house. Uh, I, I'm totally going to butcher this name. It's like, <laughs> it's, but they, uh, they have, to be honest, I don't know a whole lot about the fashion house, but the little heart guy, I really like, <laughs> yeah. and I love Converse. So I, I've been having my eye on those for a while. So finally oh. got some. Yeah. I saw they did a collab. They've done a lot of collabs, the heart stuff. I've seen yeah, like, a lot of sweaters and all that stuff. But so, so you're obsessed with those shoes, the heart. How did you get into fashion? Like, where did this come from? The deep seated, like, I need to have that type drive. Yeah, you know, I would say probably the the deepest roots would just come from upbringing. Um, you know, I spent a lot of time with my grandparents when I was younger. They're a little more old school, uh, so like I couldn't leave the house without having my hair combed. Uh, like I, I had to be dressed, you know, nice, which, which, which is funny because I, I rebelled against it then because I wanted it to be my own. But from a very young age, this idea of, of presenting yourself was very much ingrained in me and then only reinforced by my parents. So uh, I would say it, that's where that's where it starts. <laughs> that's awesome. So was yeah. that like, so that's upbringing. Then it goes, I'm assuming most people start to find themselves in high school. Is that where you were diving into? Okay, I got to match this with this. I remember Googling all the time, like, fuck, <laughs> I'm wearing these pants. Like, can I wear this color shirt with it? And I'd be yeah, like, like yeah. run out and be like, mom, does this look? She'd be like, no. I'm like, God damn it. Man. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, I would say that that kind of came a little, a little more natural. High school is kind of definitely more self-discovery. I was like in and out of bands a lot. So I was really into like, you know, the, the pop punk culture and like some of the metal culture. So like that comes with a fashion sense, you know, like yeah. uh, whether it was, you know, I, I guess you can say emo. I was wearing, I was wearing the tight pants and the band shirts and all that stuff. So lots of jewelry, like I, I kind of had an eye for it. And then, you know, that just kind of evolved through high school of like, you know, finding your own style. So totally. Yeah, man. So wait, what instrument do you play? Uh, all, I, I play quite a bit. Uh, I would say my best would be guitar. Uh, I can play a little bass because I can play guitar, some piano, and then I, I, I can't really play drums. Something about like up here and down here that just like I can't connect yet, but I haven't really dedicated much time to that. But yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So a little bit of everything. So you're going from punk rock to i mean now your styles evolved a lot and it's pretty yeah. baller uh, <laughs> well, how, yeah how what's the evolution of uh you're going from punk rock all the way to now like almost i what would you term your style as yourself maybe like modern street style is what yeah. i would say you know i would i guess that would probably be the most accurate uh category Totally. So was it just like some natural evolution or? Mm -hmm. Yeah, kind of. I mean, you know, like around the time, like I would say um, like senior year, I too was really getting into like fitness and stuff. Like I remember like the, that was kind of around the time when Fight Club was coming, like, becoming yeah. like a real click. And, you know, Brad Pitt had like really great style. A lot of these, these celebrities, they have these, these really great styles. So I kind of was emulating that. I'm like, you know, I wanted the body. I wanted to look cool. Um, so kind of taking that and then forming it, you know, kind of out of the, the band, the band t-shirts every day mm -hmm. and then starting to see, okay, like there's, there's a little bit of a method to this madness, you know, the, the matching or like the, the silhouettes of why they wear what they wear essentially totally and so just you know that that with you know what's trending and stuff but but yeah i would say yeah i always notice and believe tell me if i'm wrong or if you haven't noticed this but like the more that you evolve style the more that like you're going towards the route of like better appearance and aesthetics the more mm -hmm. people like shape their behaviors around you 
And so it's more than just like that one fold, like, yeah, I just bought better clothes and I look better. But like people like literally are like, that's gotta be some guy. I don't know. He's dressed like he's someone. Totally. Totally. I I think that is so true. I think really that, you know, that's kind of like the essence of style, like, especially in this modern world with the social media and everything like you are, you're representing yourself. And so you're, you're communicating to the world around you just by a simple look, like, you know, first impression is everything, you know, people say people just by what you, what they see you wearing are going to form an impression or, or maybe just to be intrigued just by what you're wearing. I think that's just so cool. You know? Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, It's one of those things. It's such like a, a leverageable, a leverage based ability is to be able to understand your role and like how you look in the world and how mm-hmm. that actually, I remember cause I took going to school for neuroscience. I took a lot of uh, psychology courses and stuff. And they were always like people who look, who are better looking, go further. There's like <laughs> yeah, well, everything right. shows it. It doesn't matter. Like you could be ugly, but like you even see like people who like kind of look off, but they're like dressed up in a commercial and you're like, you know, like they kind of look good. Like, it's like one of those weird things where you're like, yeah, I probably like, you know, respect them a lot differently. And it's like, it's hard to like define where the line is, but right. there's something about being like, yeah, wow, that outfit's on point. Like, you know, I got to give it to you. Yeah, absolutely. You know, there's, there's a caring for yourself that is totally communicated through style that people, if, if you take that time, just like you would with anything, fitness or whatever, I think that totally complements that people see you and they're like, oh, this guy cares. There's something about him, just mm-hmm. like you're saying. Like, that's, that, it's, it's, it's like the best way to communicate that right off the bat without even having to say a word. Yeah. I mean, your body's a temple, so like, why not dress it up as well? Yeah, you know, look good, feel good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, that's the thing too. Like, I know that all these people who are ripped and they like wear. I'm like, what the hell are you wearing? Like, when you want to like look good, accentuate things. Like, yeah, totally. <laughs> so strange. You know that it's kind of funny with the whole with with that with fitness is you know I think about if, if you've ever seen Pumping Iron. Mm-hmm. I think those guys kind of, they really had it, they had it going right back in the day. They were wearing more, and I think we're coming around to this now, you know, decades later. Uh, but just what seems to be more in is definitely something that fits better, something that fits and outlines the body, which totally makes sense. I mean, you put all this hard mm-hmm. work in the gym, and if you're wearing something that doesn't really show off all that you've worked for, <laughs> you know, it's like... yeah. It, it, it goes hand in hand, just like we were talking about with communicating. You, you take care of yourself, so you're communicating in one way, but then it's okay to just, you know, you make totally. it okay for yourself to just wear sweatpants all the time. Totally. Nothing wrong with that, but hey, like you can, you can step up your game by just, you know, shorts, yeah. jeans, and boots, or some cool sneakers go because a really long way. Exactly. Or even <laughs> wear joggers. Yeah, exactly. Joggers too. Especially now with summer, it's know wearing those lighter (laughs) lighter lighter pieces of clothing i literally think the joggers are one of the easiest ways you're like oh it's sweatpants that actually fit and look good yeah exactly that's uh you know it's funny too um one thing i've noticed is like there's this company called aesthetic revolution Mm, and these guys yeah i'm like it's like my favorite company right now like this whole athleisure thing that's kind of happened with like lululemon some of these companies are starting to get it where like, you know, these fit people also want to look really stylish. What I really love about that company, not name dropping or anything that they don't pay me for this. I just really like the brand. (laughs) Um, As a lot of these companies uh, like them are coming out, these really cool uh, urban like street style silhouettes that are very great uh, workout gear. So you can wear it not only inside the gym, but outside the gym and, I think that's that that's very versatile and, and very oh, yeah. cool. So I had to ask you because I'm one of those people. Is there a way to dress up Vibram five fingers? You know what? I tried. I really did. Uh, maybe like five years ago. <laughs> and it's funny to think of now because they're just like 
it is so hot. They're so goofy, man. They, yeah, I, I get it. And, and I, I love the technology behind that. I respect that. I had a good, like, five pairs. Yeah. I had, like, a, there was, like, a kangaroo leather. These were the closest, like, to fashionable I could find at that time. It was, like, a kangaroo leather or something like that. And it was blue. So what I, I would, I would try and match it with jeans and like, you know, some sort of blue shirt or whatever. It's so hard. I tried, but I, I, I think my friends at that time were like, yeah, I see what you're going for. I get you, but I don't know if this is working. <laughs> exactly. I know it's hard. So, but you were just bringing this up. So we got to talk about gym style a little bit. Cause like, that's something, um, you see either the person wearing like something like super ripped and like they don't care. And it's like, this has been my gym shirt for 12 years. Or nowadays I feel like you're seeing a lot more people who like have gym outfits going on. Yeah. Yeah, Uh, absolutely. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, I think it's, it it works on a multiple full thing because the like more versatile, breathable, like these things actually do help you in the long run. And I was wondering if you had any, tips or ways to structure an outfit for the gym and then we got to move into summer because those are like two similar things like it's it's getting really hot especially where you are i mean even in chicago here it's 96 right now oh wow i didn't realize it gets that hot out there (laughs) (laughs) um well you know obviously i i think that would depend on what you plan on doing in the gym i'll just take it from like the context of maybe doing some lifting or like Mm -hmm. body weight stuff definitely start with the shoes uh you know i i typically wear converse they're great for lifting you know you got the flat sole so i i typically do converse and then i'll do some either joggers or or shorts and then some sort of muscle shirt or short sleeve shirt but the key is it's not just any shirt like i didn't go to sports authority not ragging on them but Mm -hmm. like you know you can just get like under armor or whatever and that's great but I think there's a psychology yeah. to looking like you, you feel good in the clothes that you're wearing in the gym. And then that's only reinforced by the work that you're putting in too. You know what I mean? So totally. I think there's, there's something there that, that just makes a difference. Yeah. And so like with the company I was talking about or, or others out there, you get those, those, they're making these clothes now that are a little more form fitting. So that like you, I don't know, you get a nice pump and then you you look really great in them, you know, snapping the gym selfie. But I would, I I mean, you definitely want something breathable. Like, absolutely. I wouldn't go into the gym with the idea of looking really good to sacrifice your workout. Like you have to have both. So you got to find those, those brands or those companies out there that are making that, those types of clothes. Totally. Do you, so Aesthetic Revolution is one of your favorite are there Absolutely. any others that you would say that? You know, none that I have tried. I have my eye on them. I just haven't put forth the dough uh, to mm-hmm. give them a go. I would say just by visual, uh, like uh, Christian Guzman's Alpha Lee, that yeah. that's kind of similar aesthetic. Like he's got those, those form-fitting shirts, form-fitting joggers, like that athletic fit. I, I would I would bet that it's a it's a pretty great brand. I think where I would start, funny enough, is like we've kind of evolved out of magazines. I really think Instagram is a really great place mm-hmm. to search and find all these different clothing brands. And not only that, a lot of them are you know they're smaller companies, so it, it's cool to kind of pay it forward, so to speak, and, and support them in their growth, uh, especially if they're they're providing a niche product that you totally. can't really find anywhere else. Yeah. So is that one of the ways that you, let's say you're taking someone, you want to help them adjust their style, figure out where they're going next, what they need. Do you, would the person go and start by like, Hey, these are like five people that look really good on Instagram. I like their outfits a lot. Or how do you normally structure helping someone with doing that, with creating their unique style and then being able to just replicate and continue it? Yeah, I would say that is, that's how I really got like really identified what I like is kind of just going through, you know, Google images or just searching it out and finding a way to either, put, you know, put it all in a folder or find different looks that you like. I think is a really great way to identify your style. But I think really importantly, too, is what does your lifestyle look like? Mm-hmm. Like for me, I I don't. 
I'm not going any places or have any occasions where I, I really need to be suited up that often. So I don't have that many suits. You know, my, my lifestyle is very much casual. So I, I wear a lot of casual wear, street style stuff. If your lifestyle is five days a week, you're going to the office in a suit, then it might look a little differently for you. And you may not want to put so much money into one category of clothing that's just not realistic for you. So once you've identified the, you know, what their lifestyle is like, then I would say it would be best to, to then identify what do they actually mm-hmm. like. Then uh, the, ne- the next step would be find out where their current wardrobe is and then move from there. Yeah. I, and I've known some people who like, well, they'll just throw everything out and they're like, oh, okay, time for new clothes. <laughs> just like completely like change it um you know trent mccloskey he didn't do that but trent i saw trent go from like no style to like boom like pete now anytime i'm around him it's like dude look at this really this or i got this ring <laughs> and it's like it's awesome but it's so right? funny to see they like boom boom and now it's like yeah so i got this and imagine this perfectly and yeah yeah like, well, he's he's looking really cool with the he's he's got like got the beard lines going too he's got like the total package going <laughs> oh that's his the beard lines don't even get me started man oh uh, yeah like a long time with those beard lines. i'm jealous of, of that beard man my beard just is i can't get my lines to look that good no nah. well he has like a, the secret is a barber he has a barber do it and then he replicates it yeah yeah yeah, I have a barber too, but like I fuck with my. Oh, sorry. Can we cuss on here? Is that yeah. cool? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't oh, care. Wait. Yeah. I I'm I fuck with my facial hair so much that it almost feels like a waste of time. Like I view my facial hair as like a an accessory. So yeah. like today I'm full bearded. Tomorrow I might be like, oh, you know, I think I'm gonna do a mustache yeah. and do that for a few weeks. Dude. I mean that's good though. Then you have that flexibility, the versatility, just all of it, and it uh, yeah. it definitely, especially like with the summer or something like that, figuring that out because it can be super annoying. Or in the winter, a lot of people grow a beard. Uh, right. It's one of those things. So with the summer, especially now, what would you what route do you say to take? Because I know a lot of people who hate shorts. They hate wearing these these you know smaller items. I, I don't understand tank top shorts. They're like, it doesn't look good, but there there's ways to dress it up. And so I think, uh, let's dive into that a little bit more. Yeah, let's do it. Well, funny enough, this is, this is something I'm actually challenging myself with because I very much am the type of person I too don't just don't like shorts as much as pants. Mm-hmm. Like I, I just like the way pants look more, but I have to be practical and that I live in an area and and most people live in an area at some point where it gets really hot. And me specifically, it's going to be like 120 in a few weeks. You know what I mean? So you have to be realistic and like, I can't wear my all black, uh, you know, head to toe pants and everything (laughs) anymore. It's just too hot. So I think you, you really have to embrace it and challenge yourself. First of all, buy one or two pairs of shorts that you actually like. I would recommend denim or chino shorts. Yeah. Uh, would be a really great foundational summer short wardrobe. Um, I would say maybe get like a khaki, something that's a little more versatile, like a, a, a either like an olive or a khaki and then, you know, some sort of mid Mm-hmm. mid wash denim and start there uh, that would be like the foundation oops lo siento mm-hmm. that would be the foundation of uh, that would be the foundation i would start with mm-hmm. and then obviously you can move into shirts uh you know i really love the way a, a t-shirt and shorts looks um but it does get a little boring sometimes and you, i i you would want to spice that up the way that I would spice that up would just be kind of finding other um, short sleeve shirts that you can put over it. Like one of my favorites mm. would be like a go double denim. So like denim shorts, a uh, white shirt and a denim short sleeve over it. Mm. Just to like make it a little more interesting. You know what I totally. mean? Totally. Yeah. And then the shoes, the great thing about summer is I would, I would recommend keeping that minimal and, and then getting fancy with the shoes that that's kind of my overall theme of of style regardless Mm -hmm. but in summer you can really you know 
with the white, the white sneakers specifically, you can really, uh, really go at it. Totally. So what, besides the, the new shoes you just got, what, uh, what are you eyeing right now? What's, what are you looking for? What's coming out? What's, I saw uh, Gary V's releasing some shoes. Dude, I know. I'm like, yeah. it's so cool to, uh, like, I remember following him years ago. Yeah. And now watching him evolving. Now he's got sneakers. I remember him saying something about wanting to uh, basically take a brand like you, uh, K-Swiss yeah. and put him through the ringer and then, you know, sell it for millions and millions of dollars. And now he's got a shoe with them. So someone must have heard about that and, and decided to do a shoe with him. I think that's pretty cool. Totally. I, 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 I always have my eyes. I'm a big fan of Adidas. Yeah. So like, uh, like NMDs, they're always coming out and ultra boost. Like those two silhouettes are really cool. Uh, they're also like, you can wear them athletically or just, you know, lifestyle out and about. I would say I always have my eyes on maybe new colorways that they're coming out with. The one I just got a few weeks ago, all white, of course. And then a gum sole, which is really cool. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's really cool. I like yeah. those too because the foot pads are really good on those. They feel yeah. like they just feel walkable. Right, dude. Like I feel like it's like you're wearing a cloud on your feet. Yeah. You know, it's like I love I love the boost technology and, and what they're doing with uh with the shoes. It's really great. Totally. Have you ever tried out Cole Han? Cole Han, no. No, I'm so familiar like, with the brand, but I haven't tried them. I like, um, I forget which ones I have, but I have these Kohans and they use, they're partnered with Nike. So it's like oh, the okay. Nike technology in the bottom, but they're like dress shoes that like, are like sneakers. I love Oh, I, really? Okay. Yeah. They're some of my favorite. You can dress it up super easy and like they have good suede and a few other like types and Kohan always has these sales. Like don't buy a full price Kohan. It makes no sense. Just they'll get, they'll do like a 50 to 60% off sale or the shoes will go on that. And then that's when you buy it. Nice. Nice. I'll have to check them out. Yeah. I'm I'm familiar again, but I've never, uh, yeah, never bought any before. That's awesome. So what are the plans for I am Derek John? (laughs) You know, right now, uh, the plan is just to dedicate time to Instagram. I uh, kind of took a little bit of a break there. So kind of getting back in full swing. And uh, that's that's really the, the future as far as I can see it right now. Mm-hmm. It's just a, a full force uh, focus on awesome. Instagram. So creating content there. So what else are you doing then? Um, I know, like I've seen, I've been watching the stories, love them. Uh, they're awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Editing. Yeah. Good. You're putting the comedic effort in there. And something that a lot of people neglect. Stories are... I think they're a huge outlet like and you get some of the most viewership on stories than anywhere else yeah i would agree it's definitely underutilized and and i'm i feel like i'm i want to take advantage of that because it's a way for me to be a little more personable and kind of show you what what goes on in here through a video yeah that's especially especially with instagram i feel like portraying the mental like who the person is can be so hard and like the people who do win but the people who don't, don't win because you're like, as soon as something comes out and it like shows the true nature of this person, people are like, Oh, I hate that person. Because they never like, I thought they were someone else. Right. Right. And you can, you know, you can only portray so much by, by a picture on Instagram, you know, you can only see me in an outfit so many times and I'm like, okay, well what else? Yeah, totally. So the story is this kind of where I can, you can do that. And I, I would recommend doing that. I would highly recommend people, people utilize that platform and, and more than just a boomerang or, you know, a picture of their food or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's that, that personal interaction, you know, like inviting your users in. Awesome. So uh, one thing I always ask is what's your high leverage skill or something that you think that helped you get to where you are today is. And so a high leverage skill is something that you can learn on, in anything so uh for instance learning to learn is a high leverage skill because you can learn anything better learning to breathe uh properly because then exercise health sleep everything's accelerated but it can also be like a mental paradigm or thinking so uh it could be pattern recognition or something along that nature are there any high leverage skills that you say have really helped you uh you could be refining them now that could be put forth or that you'd like to highlight that really 
you know, it's like that one mindset trick or that thing that like, you're like, Oh, I see that everywhere. And like, that's how I link things and figure it out. Right on. You know, uh, I would say one thing that that's really kind of been a game changer that I've gotten into recently would be meditation. Mm. Um, I'm kind of a really fast paced individual. My mind races. And so I know this of myself, uh, and, and I've, I've contemplated doing meditation plenty. Um, but it wasn't, only, it was only until maybe like two months ago that I really started giving at least, you know, five to 10 minutes to that a day. And instantly I can really, I can really tell the change that it's made in my mindset, how I communicate with other people, mm-hmm. how I can handle stress would probably be the, the biggest one, how I can make quick decisions. It just, uh, taking that time to just quiet yourself and just breathe, like really focusing on that breath, you, you would really be amazed at such what, what a little time investment, how big of a, a difference that can make. I feel like I can self-reflect in in like on the fly so quick to be able to shift you know if i'm you know if i'm going through something or feeling stressed out i can just like take that moment to breathe a few times and then i can shift right out of it and you know get through or or persevere so i would say that would be one that i'm 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 tapping into now and only plan on going further with awesome yeah no we're finding uh i know ecker toll likes to say that that's the watcher the ability to see oh this is happening but i'm noticing that i'm experiencing this or feeling this way and if you're right. noticing that you're feeling a way it's like oh okay i'm gonna change it or i'm gonna go the opposite route right 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 yeah and, and see i would i would say that before before doing the meditation that that wouldn't be the case I, you know you may land on a, a stressful yeah. emotion or something and you'll just play that out uh, you know you, and that could last you know hours or whatever you can hold that all day totally and, and to be able from something so small to be able to reflect in that moment to totally shift your energy man i think everyone yeah. needs to be doing that <laughs> we I could think, all benefit from that <laughs> yeah if everybody in the world meditated you it would be It'd be a way different world. We'd have a lot, people would treat, they would actually do what you're supposed to do. All the synthesis of all scriptures, which is just treat others as you wish to be treated yourself. Right, right, absolutely. It would be such a like, uh, yeah, I wish. So what type of meditation are you going for right now? Or uh, are you doing? Well, my girlfriend, Hannah, she got into this app called Simple Habit. Hmm. Let's see, maybe eight, eight or so months ago. And, uh, you know, I, I had watched her do it. She, we, she usually do, we meditate right before bed. So she would turn it on and I'd just be like, yeah, whatever, just go to sleep, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, but she finally, she finally got me to do it. And, and the selling point for me, and I would recommend this to anyone else who probably is like me, is what the app does, it will give you uh, like these badges or rewards for doing, for meditating consistently for a certain Mm -hmm. amount of time. So if that's five days, 10 days, whatever, you see that every single time you go into the app to meditate and then you get the reward thereafter. So for me to visually see that for 60 days in a row, I've meditated, it it, it only reinforces that pattern so that I'm like, I can't not meditate because totally. I don't want to break my streak. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like, it, I would really recommend if you're, if you're someone that is of that personality type uh, that you need that reinforcement, like seeing that number is so motivating for me. Oh yeah. So I'm going to keep doing that and keep doing that because I don't want to break that streak. Totally. Yeah. That's one of the, it's the, uh, the perceived loss. I know a lot of times like that's, why people in casinos when they lose something like no i can make it back because it's not powerful enough yet the perceived loss um that's interesting that's cool yeah i've i i would challenge you at one point i'm gonna give you a challenge just because let's do it (laughs) dr joe dispenza read some of his stuff okay i'm gonna write Um, that down real quick i would say he i used to use headspace and then i use calm uh, for a while, I would just meditate on my own or use binaural beats. I still use Brain FM sometimes, but like his is more intense. You're going to spend an hour meditating, something like that. Oh, wow, an hour. 
you really are challenging me. <laughs> yeah, it, it takes time just to at least read his book okay. because I've seen more I see more people start to read his stuff and then like look at like the world differently because you're like, he basically, he was a neuroscientist, um, got into yoga, broke his, after he broke his back, like healed it. And like now is like a meditation guru type dude, I guess uh, you could say guru. Um, but he teaches how to basically change your neuronal firing patterns and like pull things into the quantum reality through meditation. So like some, you know, you could say hippy dippy, but he measures everything and he has actual scientific data showing it working. Nice. Nice. Nothing wrong with hippy dippy. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, um, I like it. So speaking of hippy dippy, I always have to ask, are you current currently questioning anything? So uh, one of the main motifs is uh, question everything. And that could be politics, uh, it could be life, it could be, you know, whatever it may be. But uh, it's just something that, like, is on your mind lately, and you're like, I do not think it works that way. Right. Hmm. I would say lately, and definitely in the, in the context of our conversation here, would be the age paradigm, mm. um, especially where style comes in. You know, in society, we kind of have these unwritten rules of, like, every decade is supposed to go or look a certain way, uh, especially in clothing. It is so apparent. Like you're, you're supposed to dress a certain way when you're a teenager, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, yeah. and so on. I would really, I would say I highly question that. Uh, I don't, I don't think that, yeah, I think you should dress how you feel. I think, uh, I think my father has been a really good um, influence in that. And I'm so thankful for him kind of taking me on in that. You know, he's kind of in the early stages of a divorce, so he's a little more open to this mm -hmm. feedback because, you know, he's going to be dating. But, you know, m my father's approaching 60. A 60-year-old usually wears, like, some lame Hawaiian T-shirt and, like, gross cargo shorts yep. and, like, flip-flops. Like, that's the – I would say generally, at least here in Arizona, that, that's kind of the, the dress code for the 60s decade. And I would say you, you, no matter what age you are, I think you, you, should, you should question that and you should dress the way you feel. Like my father now, he's, he's rocking like a pair of Converse, like some nice denim, Hell yeah. and like a nice fitted shirt. I mean, he's also taking really good care of himself. Like, mm -hmm. you know, age is just a for him. It's not like something that he's like, oh, I'm this age, so now I have to, you know, yeah, have exactly. to uh, start going downhill. No. No, and I would say it's never too late. It's never too late to start caring about your, your body. It's never too late to start dressing better and how you feel. Totally. Wow, that's actually, that's awesome. Yeah, I never really thought of that. I think about age a lot, of course, because everybody, everybody as the age existentially questions what age is. It's like right. one of the biggest things. But I love it. Dress how you feel. Yeah. I That's think age is, is a mindset, especially in the context of what I'm saying here. It, it's a total mindset. There, I, I'm, I have plenty of friends who are of older ages that, that don't fit into that. But, yeah. you know, it, it's, it's definitely not a common thing. It requires some, some deep, deep self-reflection. And I would say that is definitely something I, I'm, I'm, I am uh, I'm thinking of and challenging all the time, even awesome. in myself as I'm approaching 30, you know, what yeah. that looks like. And it doesn't, it, it only look, it only should look like what I want it to look like. Exactly, man. Create your reality. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so is there anything you're obsessed with lately besides the shoes that you just recently got? And besides, it doesn't even have to be style related. It's just like something you're like, Oh, I've been doing this or I love this new gadget I got or blah, 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 whatever it may be. It's just something that you're like, Oh, I'm obsessed with this right now storytelling <laughs> really as you may have yeah may have found out oh it, it's funny i have multiple times in my life kind of uh had this realization of how much i like making videos or like little mm -hmm. movies i in fact i don't know if my parents have it but they might have this like do you remember um i want to say might have been Playmobil. You could get them at Hobby Lobby. It was kind of like the cousin of Legos. Like they were a little bigger than Legos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You remember? You're, I can't like 
I wish I can remember how to, to describe them. But anyway, I had a ton of those and I would make these movies where I'd act them out and, and, and uh, like with our old video camera. Yeah. And, and then I would show them to my parents. And then like, you know, I took video production in high school and, you know, I, I did YouTube for a little bit. And then now I feel like I'm coming full circle again and finding another way to just get that creative, uh, to exercise that creative muscle. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I don't know what that's going to turn into, but I know that I'm excited about it right now. So I'm going to keep exper- or experimenting with that and, and obsessing over it and learning and totally. keep moving forward with that. Have you read any yeah. Joseph Campbell? No, I have not. Is Joseph Campbell, I feel like I know that name. Yeah, you've heard the hero's journey. Yeah. So yes, Joseph that's Campbell's exactly the hero's journey. journey. Yeah, the hero, it's, uh, oh, what's the book? I'm, I'm reading it. So his stuff's very dense. Uh, I think it's the hero with a thousand faces. But he's, ta- he's showing all the parallels of all the different, like, biblical uh, and old stories that represent the hero's journey and that show what it is today. Like that's a, the perfect story arc, you know? Right. Um, it's a great book though, especially for thinking about stories, but I love that. Yeah. And your Instagram stories are definitely becoming some awesome stories. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, man. Glad you like them. Awesome. So in the future, we're going to look forward to more stories um what else man you know you're i know you're posting on instagram and you're getting back into it um man i'm excited i would say that's that thank you thank you that means a lot i I would say that that's what you can expect you can expect more content on the fashion and and some of the fitness front as well kind of my journey through that totally and other lifestyle things you know uh, really just documenting the way I live, you know, the, from the food I eat, you know, whatever it is. Yeah. I see you got two more, plants. More right? of that. <laughs> yeah. What, you, what you no, know, seriously. I like obsessed about this a little bit. What are your plans? You know, I wish I could tell you. It's actually my girlfriend's thing. Uh, Hannah is obsessed with plants. Obsessed. Like to the point where I had to like have a come to Jesus talk with her. Like, Hey, I don't want to live in a jungle. (laughs) You know, I was like, you can buy plants. You can continue buying plants, but you have to have a thought out. Like, where are you going to put this plant? Cause right now it's getting like all these plants everywhere. So we've come to a happy medium. I think we're at like 20 plants now, Wow! but every plant kind of has like a dead designated area now, instead of her just buying a plant, just to put somewhere. Dude, so yeah, I would got say some big, good oxygen. Exactly. I, to that, I would say the biggest benefit is nothing is better than coming home at the end of the day. And I open the front door and it's just like floral essence. It's yeah. It's so relaxing. No, that is awesome. Yeah, I was just talking to Brad Pilon and we were talking about like CO2 internal inside your house. And I mean, plants are oh, nice. phenomenal. I I'm in, I'm in the middle of that podcast. I haven't gotten to the part where you guys. Oh, talk awesome. Yeah. Yeah, dude. It's crazy. But like, I mean, just having plants is one of the easiest ways because you think about it, you're breathing out all this CO2. The plants are taking in and then they're regurgitating oxygen. And so if you have something living that can do that, that's how it keeps the air in your wherever you are good. Whereas most people, one, never open a window. And two, don't have any plants. And so they're just like spewing in their own, like, it sounds weird, but basically it's exhaled fat because, you know, that's how your fat leaves. So you're just like (laughs) breathing in the fat that you breathed out and all this CO2 that you've created and lost. And so when you re-inhale CO2, you can't use it. It's not like it's uh, increasing the CO2 the same as if you created it and then it's internal. It's super weird. I was having, I've been having all these like epiphanies of like, this is how this works. This is how this works. <laughs> to, like figure out the whole piece of the puzzle until you're just going to, I'm just going to have a regular place again. And then, right, right. oh, the wind is just a little cracked and there's a plant. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Maybe that's why I'm recovering so well, all this extra oxygen. Seriously. Yeah, no, yeah. it probably is. I mean, depending on where you are and what you're doing, like 
the better air quality, a hundred percent. We lived in Colorado for a month and like Oh really? That's awesome. Yeah, like you could Colorado tell. Oh dude, it was so fun. It's great area by the way. Uh we were in uh Denver for a month. Oh, okay. I've never been, but Telluride is, is where I've been, but okay. man, it's beautiful there. Yeah. The one thing everybody would ask me, like, how is it? I'm like, it's a cool city, but like the air. I'm like it's just the air. <laughs> the air. <laughs> for sure it's like great city but the air man yeah the air <laughs> i love it's, it <laughs> it's crazy and like i would uh i'd love to have like some crazy indoor outdoor house uh in the in the caribbean it's like 300 350 parts per million co2 level in houses because they're built for airflow same with arizona probably because you well maybe probably up here it's like air constriction because you don't want any cold coming into your house right so humid there too huh yeah and so like it literally will elevate to like a thousand of 1500 parts per million global warming is 400 parts per million wow the inside of your house is like you're spewing in what you think is so bad from global warming times five four wow oof it's yeah some serious numbers man (laughs) it's so weird though it's like one of those things you don't think that your air quality this is like why i always bring up higher higher leverage skills and breathing and stuff it's like oh i never thought about my air quality and then it's like right that's ever like you exist in air you're part you're an organism part of the environment if you're not if the environment's not good that you're in everything's not good yeah, it's uh, I absolutely more. Yeah, such a strange thing. But I don't want to keep you too long, man. Where can everyone find you? Uh, very easily. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at I am Derek John. That's spelt D E R E K J O H N. Awesome, man. Awesome. Well, we'll probably have another conversation soon. Um. I mean, there's four seasons and no one knows what to wear any of the seasons. <laughs> Love it. See, I'm I'd be glad to be on again. It'd be, it'd be a lot of fun. Awesome, man. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, thank you for having me. Awesome.